Hello, I'm Tom Hollingsworth, and you are watching Networking Field Day 13. We are here in San Jose, California with Viptela. We have invited a group of networking bloggers, speakers, podcasters, and luminaries of the community to take part in this discussion, offer their opinions, ask questions, and add their voice to the, the conversation about software-defined wide area networking. If you would like to learn more about Tech Field Day, including how to become a presenter or a delegate, please join us at our website, techfieldday.com. If you would like to see more videos about this and other exciting technologies, please check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash techfieldday. Right. Before that, we had regional security perimeter. How about regional internet access? So what I'm trying to get to is I'm trying to get to my cloud applications as fast as possible. Right? So how can I get to my cloud applications? There's two ways. I can establish a regional internet exit points. And again, is it a regional data center? Not really. It's a site that is well connected that I want to use as my internet exit points. And I can regionalize those. And I can sprinkle them around my network. And I can say Pacific Northwest exits through these two sites. Uh, whatever, Miami, Florida exit through those sites. So I can sprinkle that service around. And that is going to be the boundary of my internet access. Right? So what we can do is we can start looking at the traffic that goes into the cloud services, build our view of how the traffic goes into, and determine the performance characteristics that you are getting to get to that service. So we are going to give you a score of how good your connection is to get to Office 365, Dropbox, SharePoint, Salesforce, all the major SaaS applications. For that, we can, we can kick it off at those regional locations that you have decided that I want to do internet from. Now, you can also say, man, but I want to do internet, direct internet breakout. Can we support that? Yes. Same thing, you can kick it off the same process over direct internet access. It actually ties really back to your security question. Security at the regional sites or security at the, uh, each site individually. Same thing for SaaS application access. So what it's going to do is we are going to let the network intelligence determine what is the best path for you. For the sites that I do not have direct internet access, I will choose the best exit way through one of the regional points. Depends which one gives me the best performance. For the sites that I have DIA access, which is the direct internet access, I have a choice. I either go directly, which is going to win majority of the times. But what if my local ISP is experiencing issues? Maybe what I receive as a performance uh, sort of of that service, such as Office 365, for example, maybe it's better for me to send it to that site, which is acting as a regional exit, and exit from there, because my local ISP is having an issue. So maybe this is an MPLS connection. I'm hybrid. So I have a broadband connection locally for DIA. That connection is misbehaving. Something is happening. ISP just having a bad day. I can backhaul it to that regional facility, which is close enough to me, and exit from there. And network, network intelligence is going to decide which way is better to go. OK. So that's exactly what I'm going to show you. Actually, I'm going to show you a little bit of a different spin on that. And the different spin is that instead of using a, a regional exit point, I'm actually just having two ISPs locally. But I'm a human, and I don't want to sit and ping and say which one is better. I want the system to determine which one is better. There is nothing on the other end. It's not a bookended solution. I, don't, I cannot put anything on Office 365 or on, on Microsoft or, or Dropbox or anywhere. So we are learning about traffic, determining the score, and letting the, um, letting the system decide which path is better. All right. So I did, uh, we did record a video about that. Uh, just to kind of speed things up for you guys because we thought that we may be, may be running um, out of time. But I'll just, I'll just walk you guys through what we're seeing here. It's the same vManage that you already saw before. So what we're doing, we're going to a tab, which is for the service we called Cloud Express. As you can see, there is a Salesforce service that was activated. We are monitoring the, sales, the, sales service, the Salesforce service. We're reporting 96 milliseconds over local internet access, and it's going over interface gigabit zero, zero. So now what we're going to do is we're going to back into the, uh, into the dashboard. We're going to go into 
the uh, machine that is sitting behind that VH that is performing this monitoring. So it's chosen ISPA, right? It says ISPA is good, 96 milliseconds is good for me. Now what we're going to do, we're going to log into Salesforce service and actually do a little bit of a browsing around, right? Just to see that the response time is good, right? So ISP is not having any issues yet. Now at some point, what I want to do is I want to go and actually do a little bit more stressful thing is transfer a file. So I'm uploading a file into Salesforce. It's a 10 meg file. What you will see is that that upload goes pretty fast because ISP is not having any issues, right? Um, so the, the, the upload is going fast, right? So now I want to basically, after the upload finishes, I want to go and sort of break the ISP. Why? Because I have another ISP in there. Right? But I don't want to go and reconfigure anything to take, the different, to take I, different ISP out to Salesforce. Remember, this is direct internet access. I really have limited visibility into what happens. I don't have any device on the other side. Right? I cannot measure anything. It's just plain internet. Right? So uh, what you saw is that I went and I introduced 750 milliseconds of latency. And you see it's going really, 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 really slow. But then Cloud Express kicks in and it says, oh, I've determined that the other ISP is faster. So it reroutes you to the other ISP at that location. So this is really awesome for somebody who is mostly broadband or maybe all broadband. They have multiple ISPs and I need a network intelligence to determine what ISP is performing best. And then when I log back in, you see that interface, selected interface was changed from 00 to 02. And I can also see the score that was assigned to an interface so I can have sort of a point of reference. So two ISPs let the system decide which ISP is better performing. This is just a short, uh, short portion that would show you how you can add additional gateways, right? Or ba basically a device that starts the probing process. So that could be your, uh, that's what, that what was a DIA, this could be your sort of regional VH. So enable polling process from there as well. And let the system again determine which way is the better. Is it the direct internet access or is it the regional access? If I don't have regional access, I just have two DIAs, which one of the DIAs is better? So system is intelligent to go through all of that and just basically determine, make the determination, determination for you what is the best path to get to the SaaS application. And, and we do this for roughly about two dozen SaaS applications. Yes. Um, some of them are rudimentary, as in you analyze the path leading up to the SaaS application, use the telemetry from there to choose. Some of them are a little more involved. There is integration with the SaaS provider itself to figure out what the best path is. And this so. can be done on a per VPN. Yes. So Again, yes. per VPN. Not all, I can do that. So you can, you can kind of start realizing how powerful all that thing when it comes together because I can have different behaviors for different types of users. I can have service insertion for one. I can have Zscaler for the other. I can have cloud application monitoring for the third one. So it really kind of That's like peeling an onion. All of those features come together on a single solution, single fabric. And it makes intuitive sense, right? You, you don't want to ac accelerate application access to, let's say, Office 365 on your guest Wi-Fi. I mean, right. You may want to, but I don't know if anybody's that <laughs> nice, right? Is so um, so things that like that can be easily controlled. Is that path selection looking beyond the first hop to the total path? Absolutely. Yes, this is all the way up to the SaaS application yes. deep inside their infrastructure. Yes, it's looking all the way in. We're going to give David a small break here, um, and we're going to have Manan come here and cover a little bit of the analytics because we have 10 minutes left. Yeah. I know it was, it was involved, especially since you guys mentioned in the beginning that this is the first time you're getting exposed to Viptela technology, so it maybe it's a little bit going to take some time to digest. Uh, but uh, the, the idea was to really kind of show you guys um, the power, the flexibility, the completeness of the solution. It's we are trying to address all of it, not just pieces of it, like all of it. Any questions? <laughs> Question from Twitter. Sure. How well does it scale out? How many sessions per second can it handle? Sessions per second. <laughs> so the scale is limited to a single device, right? Um, While you at a branch, this, for example, you, you may have, so let's say, you have 128,000 sessions, um, which is plenty for like a 40 user site. Um, so we have, 
different devices have different scale characteristics, so it goes into the sizing guideline accordingly. Now, one, one more thing to add is all of this decisions are made locally. Yeah. What, what that means is, uh, what that means is every brand depending on the capacity of the device, uh, as Ramesh pointed out, you could have a n number of sessions. And uh, because it's done at, at, at a local branch, you can scale almost infinitely depending on how many devices you put. I have a quick question too. Um, so for an enterprise that has hundreds and hundreds or maybe thousands of sites, yeah. retail might have several yep. thousand. Yes. I work for an organization that has several dozen. And a, and a pain point is the speed to spin up a new site. Yep. Um, so I, I get it that you can't control how long the ISP takes to get in there, but do you have the infrastructure as an organization to get your box out there, get whatever is out there, and provide that service in a matter very quickly? Because that, that is a pain point. Yeah, so the, I'll give you two data points because we do have a retailer, a manufacturing firm, and a large uh, bank that has multiple thousands okay. of sites. Um, I'll take the example of the retailer started off with two sites a night for probably the first few days, ramped up to 25 in the second week, ramped up to about 70 in the third week. So they did the whole 1400 site deployment uh, from start to finish in a matter of four and a half months. I assume that you knew that was coming though. So for a new site, we have an acquisition. Can we, it, it, operationally, can we work with you as a, as a uh, as an organization to just get that stuff yeah, out to absolutely. those quickly. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that, that's one of the reasons why we have large distribution partners like Westcon who can yep. actually get the site, uh, I mean, the device out to your site almost instantaneously and then off we go, so. Global delivery. Right. Seven by four, 365 support. And that was my next question, yeah. yes. the support. RMAs, next business day, or. Yeah, and, and we say enterprise class, hours. it's <coughs> not limited to the product, the entire company has yes. to breathe enterprise class, right? So, which means 24 by seven support, all of the things that go along with it. And I'm, I'm really sorry, because I know we we're short, but I, I do want to ask about uh, just sure. a view into analytics and things like that. Uh-huh. Oh, we're talking about that, Mr. good. Uh, yeah. That, and we want to hit scale as well before we close. Yes, absolutely. Sure. So, while... Uh, yeah. hmm? You had a question about scale, I believe. Oh, you, uh, yeah, I just want to make sure we hit that. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, as well. So while Manon is setting up, I can, I can tell you. Um, so the largest deployment that we have is about 6,000 nodes in a single overlay, uh, wow. centrally managed, centrally controlled, um, with a whole lot of policies, whatnot. It's a bank. Uh, that's the largest that is deployed right now. So 6,000 nodes in a single SD-WAN fabric. It's a single SD-WAN yeah. fabric deployed running production traffic. Okay. Um, there's no alternative. If this breaks, we will you will see our name in Wall Street Journal, right? And then uh, on uh, on an edge box, is there a, a, a limit to transactions per second that it can handle that sort of thing? Yeah, so we um, it, it's a layer three device, but it has all of this application awareness. Um, so if, if you don't turn on any of like the DPI functions and so forth, it's just a layer three device, so it's limited by throughput, right? Uh, it's one gig, 100 meg, 10 gig, whatnot. If you turn on all of this, we have seen roughly a 20% degradation in performance uh, at best, and I'm avoiding giving a, a session per second number because we, we DPI doesn't kind of work that way. Uh, you, you identify an application, once it's identified, it's fast path, right? And so it's not the total number of cumulative connections and whatnot, it's the speed at which you can process and, and move on to the next application. So we've seen at best at 20% degradation performance based. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right, one and the whole solution uh, was uh, from the beginning designed to scale to tens of thousands, thousands of yeah. uh, end yes. nodes. So the architecture from the very beginning was designed uh, uh, with that in mind. So it's horizontal scale uh, management, you just add more VMs, it just scales. Uh, control plane, you just add more VMs, it scales. Data plane, you just add more data plane head and boxes and it just horizontally scales. So every single piece of the architecture is horizontally scaled. It's basically, theoretically, limitless. There's of course, it's kind of a bold statement, but uh, the architecture of the solution is such is that it's, it's, it's not bound by the number of devices. <coughs> All right, so you could take it far. Okay. Thanks Ramesh and David. Uh, so when Ramesh started uh, the day, uh, he talked about three pieces of the solution, the V-Edge, uh, which is the data plane device, the V-Smart controller, and V-Manage, which is the NMS. And uh, while David did all his demos, he showed a lot of areas where we show a rich analytics and stats collection and, and how, how the traffic is flowing through the, through the network through that we manage uh, NMS. We just launched a beta service uh, of a product, a new product, which is a fourth layer of the solution called V Analytics. This is a SaaS service that 
essentially aggregates data from multiple different customers into a analytic service, mines it, runs multiple different algorithms, and provides insight back to the customer in a single pane of glass. Uh, we manage where they can visualize how the network is performing, what is going on in the network, and make improvements uh, based on the recommendations that this analytic service provides on fine tuning the network. Uh, what you're seeing here is a dashboard. This is a live dashboard from uh, a network that we run here at Webtela. It's called CorpNet, where all of us employees, we have VH routers at home, and that's how we build this network. And uh, this is the live feed that you're seeing from there. Uh, there are various components to this. Uh, we provide application level visibility, network level visibility, how different carriers are performing in this particular uh, widget that you see here, there is uh, different carriers all over the world where the VH routers are residing and how they are performing. Uh, there is an application view on which are the applications that are performing and how well they are performing. So you get a deep insight into how the network is be behaving. Uh, you get visibility into which providers are giving you more loss and latency and which providers are performing well. And based on that, we can provide recommendations on what your SLS should be. So what your app route policies should be, and, and you can fine tune your network based on that. Uh, I know we are running out of time, so I'm just going to talk about a couple of use cases here. Uh, one of them is, uh, let's look at applications. Uh, a lot of us focus on applications and making sure applications are running smoothly in the network. So in this particular case, I have various uh, use cases around applications. First, I'm looking at a family of applications how they are performing, and uh, I can look at it based on how much bandwidth they are consuming, how much how they are performing in terms of what tunnels they are going over and what loss and latency they are, they are getting, as well as I can look at the anomaly of applications in terms of bandwidth usage. So I can, I can say using this application that the site in San Jose is using 5% of the bandwidth uh, on YouTube traffic, whereas it was using 1% of it just a few days back. So the users clearly get an indication of what is what applications are consuming their bandwidth. So in this particular case, I'm just going to take web as an example. And uh, once I click on the web, I, I exactly know uh, what applications in the web category are being consumed. And uh, there's a whole set of applications. I filtered down to the top 25 applications. And I'm going to focus here on YouTube. So I look at YouTube as one of the applications that, are, that is consuming a lot of bandwidth. And then I look at how the YouTube has been consuming over a period of time. I can further drill down into it. Uh, let's say I, I drill down into a point of interest. It could be a peak or it could be another, another area. And I exactly know which sites are consuming. I can further drill down into these sites and exactly pinpoint to a user who is consuming YouTube traffic at a given point in time across from from the overall network perspective. So are you guys doing, how do you do application identification? Are you doing deep packet inspection at the That's edge? Right. Yeah, so at, at our vEdge uh, router, we can enable uh, application fingerprinting. What that means is every flow that goes through the vEdge router will fingerprint and will, will categorize as a particular type of application belonging to a particular type of family. And based on that, you can even take action. So I can say YouTube, which is a heavy bandwidth uh, application, force it on an internet uh, circuit as opposed to an MPLS circuit. Or I can say uh, uh, YouTube limited to this much throughput. So we can not only do application fingerprinting, we can actually take further action through a centralized policy. And how often are you updating those signatures? We, we, uh, we update fairly often, so we actually have, it, have updates going out uh, every few every month or every couple of months as part of our releases. So this was just a quick preview of, uh, of the beta service that we just recently launched. We have a, we have a handful of customers already subscribed to this service, and, uh, and they're, they're getting all the benefits of the algorithms that we have developed. Yeah, I think it's just back to the back to the application question, right? Maybe we just show yeah. what is possible um, just in 30 seconds. Right. Just wanted to pull this up. So when we mentioned scale earlier and scale with application visibility, just wanted to show you this screen in here. Right. 
This is the system with 6,000 devices. This is not a live customer, and we're not, yeah, by the this way. This is not the <laughs> same device. We don't want to touch customer traffic in here. But this is, uh, this is an environment which is physical and virtual devices, and this is close to 6,000 devices in a single fabric. You can see it's pretty massive, 20 controllers, 3 v managed systems. It takes power to run this, right? But that's what we meant by saying that it could be taken to highs. Like, this is the sort of topology view of how devices are distributed. And to the application visibility, it's right there in the dashboard. That's for 6,000 devices. Network-wide? Yes. And you can drill down, drill down, drill down, all the way up to yes. a single device, single host. The, the analytics platform that you were just demoing? That's a layer on top of this. So this comes standard with the vManage platform. I know we didn't touch a whole lot about the operation visibility piece. We did a lot of actions on it. Uh, the analytics platform builds on top of this. Okay. Is that a cloud-based platform? It's a cloud-based cloud SaaS service. Uh, and uh, one of the key value props that we provide to customers is not just providing insight into their network and how net their network is behaving. We can actually mine it across customers and say how their network is performing compared to other networks that, that we see uh, from different environments. Yeah. So, for example, if you want to open a new site in Arizona, uh, and then we, we can clearly tell you that these are the providers that we have seen in Arizona, and these are the loss latency characteristics we have seen from those providers in Arizona, so that you can proactively decide what you want to do with that uh, new location. So is this only providing you visibility as it's transiting a site, you know, leave, leaving a particular branch, going to another branch, or going to the internet, or going to the core? That's correct. That's correct. So it doesn't have any visibility for traffic that might be internal. That's, that's right. Yes. yes. Yeah. It's, so it's it doesn't. So, so, yeah, it doesn't substitute like your NPM and APM type solutions. <laughs> that, that, right. I wasn't going to mention <laughs> these <laughs> names, but yes, that's where. No, absolutely. Yeah. This is a this is a van van performance and van fine tuning solution. Okay. Yeah. So I know we are four minutes over, so maybe I just wrap up. So uh, I know we covered a lot of topics. We didn't cover a few, which means we'll do another TFT. Um, I'm just looking <laughs> at David, but uh, <laughs> thanks again. I, I, I felt it was fairly interactive. Uh, I know we covered a lot of ground, lots of good questions. Um, certainly, feel free to reach out to us uh, anytime, and uh, and certainly uh, look forward to being on on the show again. All right. Great. Thirty, 30 seconds uh, <laughs> should not happen without the credit. So uh, guys at the back uh, and the sides. So that's uh, Umar. Umar is uh, our, uh, our solution architect. Uh, has been working for the last one week trying to get this whole thing up. Uh, Manan spoke, uh, director of product management. Um, David uh, runs our technical marketing team, and Atif uh, runs our solution engineering team. Uh, and myself, uh, Ramesh, run the product management team. So thank you again.